Let's talk about pulmonary embolism. A pulmonary embolism, or a PE, is when you have an embolism in the lungs. So an embolism is, uh, so a blood clot is known as a thrombus. If it's a thrombus, that means it is stationary in a blood vessel. It is an embolism when it is a thrombus that travels. So a uh, pulmonary embolism, uh, this is going to be, we have a blood clot that develops and it moves its way to the lungs and as it, the lungs go from the arteries and they shrink themselves down towards the capillaries, it gets clogged in there. And so what it does is it blocks off the uh, blood supply to the lungs and as you know the lungs, that's where the blood is going to go to the lungs, exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide and then re-enter the body. So when pulmonary embolism happens, the lungs aren't able to work because they're not getting uh, the blood that they need to do the gas exchange. What are some risk factors? Well, the risk factors for pulmonary embolism are the same risk factors you'll see for any kind of blood clots. And so this would be immobility. When blood is not moving, it clots. Okay? Contraceptives in pregnancy because of the changes in hormones. Some patients just have coagulopathy disorders where they may have too much platelets, too many clotting factors, uh, and for some reason they have clotting, uh, increased risk for clotting. Uh, surgery, because clots like to form where there's an uh, abnormality. And so if you have a blood vessel here that just got uh, surgically in, uh, attached to another blood vessel, you're going to have uneven surfaces and so a blood clot may form on, on the surgical sites. And also surgery, uh, you'll have immobility typically. If you have a uh, risk of, or if you have atrial fibrillation, this is where the uh, atrium, which are the top chambers of the heart, are no longer getting good contractions and so the blood is pretty stagnant in there and when blood's not moving, it clots. And then what happens is those clots then get spit out to the rest of the body. Sickle cell, because you have those sharp sickled cells uh, sickling into the side of a blood, uh, a blood vessel and then a bunch of them get stuck on each other and form a clot. A bone fracture because if you break a bone there's a lot of blood that goes in the bones and it can release fat embolize uh, because there's fat inside of bones. Or smoking because smoking causes blood vessels to shrink and so that means even a, tinier, a tiny clot can, can have a big impact. So what are signs and symptoms of pulmonary embolism? This is something you'll see on tests. Impending feeling of doom. The patient's going to have a high level of anxiety. Now I told you the lungs aren't working properly, so you're going to have shortness of breath, trouble breathing, and low oxygen levels. And to compensate for the low oxygen levels, you're going to have increased respiratory rate, and increased heart rate to try to make up for it, but you're going to have dropping blood pressures because the blood ain't going anywhere. You can hear uh, the lungs are going to sound a little bad because you're going to hear crackles, uh, they may have a cough, and you're going to hear pleural friction rub. That's when the pleural cavity, here's the lung, and right next to it is a cavity. You're going to hear them rubbing together because the lung is now inflamed and swollen from the, from the blood clot. And you can hear S3 and S4 sounds. Those are heart sounds. Now the heart is being affected as well. You, uh, you can see pleural fusion, so you'll see fluid around the lung because there's lots of pressure and so the, the fluid is just leaking out around the lung. And you can see particularly that high pressure will cause red dots on the patient's chest because those blood vessels around the skin of the chest are very similar to the blood vessels towards the lungs. So they share some of the same pathways. Uh, labs, you may see uh, increased D-dimers. That's increased risk for coagulation uh, for blood clots. And at first with the d impending doom, there's going to be hyperventilating. So you're going to see low CO2 levels, but it's eventually going to raise and become high. So diagnosis. So they can do a chest x-ray or a CT and they can see, hey, something's not going right with this lung. And then they can do a VQ scan where they actually will visualize, okay, the blood clot is in that vessel. Treatment. This patient uh, is probably going to be needing a ventilator to help them to breathe because you're going to put oxygen on them, but it's not going to do any good because the blood is not going to the lungs. It's not that they can't get oxygen in. So they may need a ventilator. Anticoagulants to prevent them from developing other blood clots. A thrombolytics to break up the blood clot itself and if that doesn't work they may need to do an embolectomy which is a surgical removal of the emboli and these patients can have a vena cava filter which is going to be put into the the veins of the body and it's going to catch any blood clots that are still in the body because this may not be the only blood clot that was released and that is active in the body prevention SED and TED hose um, in order to keep blood flowing through the legs because blood that doesn't flow clots uh, anticoagulants, 
and uh, just making sure the patient has range of motion and that they're ambulating and getting that blood pumping. So this is pulmonary embolism.